going on, everybody? My name is Brace Harris. And I'm Victoria Fenton. And we are... Unveil. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. W one and all. We have a special guest with us today. We do. Uh, it's a beautiful young lady. Yeah. Uh, her name is Riley B. Harris. She is a... Kava Poo. <laughs> half King Cavalier, half Miniature Poodle. She is my pup, and... And I'm calling her Riri from now on. Riri. And we are, uh, she's going to be hanging out with us today. So we apologize in advance for any dog maneuvers, maneuvers that we have to do in order to manage the situation. <laughs> if somebody leaves the house, she will bark. You will hear barking. So just be, be warned. Um, and if you're on YouTube, I think you'll just be able to see her at this moment in time sitting on Grace's knee. Being very good. Yeah, she's pretty chill right now. She's pretty chill right now. <laughs> right. The, the, uh, yeah, the operative. Yeah. Okay, so what are we talking about today, my friend? We are talking about, do you have it all together on the outside, but are really falling apart on the inside? Mmm. Yes. Yes. Do you have it all together on the outside? You show that <sighs> beautiful, you know, like we talk about this all the time. It's like what we see on Instagram and Facebook and all the... TikToks and all that is a lot of the times a facade. Mm. Mm. And what we've done thus far has been very specific within the podcast. We've spoken about specific topics and we've spoken about tools or actual techniques, mm -hmm. etc. And I feel like we've had a conversation and we really feel that our best value is shown by taking people through these complicated real life expressions of human, the human condition, basically, because there is value and merit in actually exploring more complex topics that actually apply to real people. And this is so prevalent. It's like everyone has one face for the world and another face on the inside. And I often have thought that the goal in life is to have the smallest distance between those two faces. Yeah. And when you do that, your life becomes way more joyous because mm. you're authentic. Mm. You're not having to use tons of energy mm -hmm. to portray this version of what you feel like you need to portray to mm -hmm. the world in order to get whatever the goal is, whether that be have more people like you, them not see your quote unquote weaknesses. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's all a strategy mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It is. And I think that the key that we need to, you know, express is that this is pretty universal as a strategy. And that comes down to down to a societal thing. It's like, you know, just breaking it down to super prime, super primal like brain cognition um, perspectives. We are built to recognize similarities and differences in people, and we're built to be drawn to the people in the tribe, essentially, mm -hmm. who could be the most successful, who we see that could be the most influential, or you know, we we are, and this is why you know school dynamics are ridiculous when you're a kid because it's like that clique nature that happens in schools it's just the same when you're an adult it just looks a bit different but we're always looking for inclusion and we always want to be included in the popular group because they have the most assets resources yes. money friends all that you get down to the the primal part of it it's like if you're part of the tribe you survive yeah and if you're not part of the tribe you're the exile you die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the core right. of it, it's well, a survival, that sounds it's survival super thing. like over over dramatic, but actually, literally, when we are working with ourselves or our clients, it's it, the reality is that everything is a how far are you away from death? Because that's the human condition. So when we talk about when I talk about the human condition, it's like your psyche is not set up to it's not out to get you. It's not set up to fail. It's set up to protect you. And everything about your nervous system is set up to protect you. Mm -hmm. And everything about the way your entire world runs is based on your nervous system. So realistically, every time you're facing a decision, it's a life and death decision. It doesn't look like it. You know, what should I have for dinner tonight? It's not a life or death situation. Yeah, that's not in your conscious mind, by the way. That's that's kind of a subconscious super subconscious unconscious belief yeah what perspective i mean and just to expand on that just a little bit so you guys understand the difference between the conscious and, and subconscious conscious mind is like what about four percent um of the processes processing that is going on mm -hmm. inside your mind or what you consider your mind 
um, it rationalizes, you weigh out options, you make decisions based on you know, a, a variety of, of different criteria. Mm -hmm. And then the subconscious, the other 96% mm -hmm. of the processes that are going on, you don't even know about. Mm -hmm. And the subconscious is set up where it doesn't rationalize anything. It doesn't make decisions. It just reacts. Mm -hmm. Stimulus, reaction. Mm -hmm. Stimulus, reaction. Based on pattern recognition. Exactly. And so the subconscious is, it's the huge driver of who we are and how we show up in the world because it's literally storing our main processing. And you can think of it like a computer. It's like yeah. the, I mean, I'm not going to get quite right, but what's the, it's the RAM, isn't it? That's kind of the bit that's loose in storage so there's ready access to memories. And yeah, so that's available right. for like the computational power that you're actually using in that moment in time. Mm -hmm. And you can think of that like your conscious mind. But it's the hard drive and the, the huge amounts of storage that's in the background and the programming that goes into the software that tells your brain how to process and retrieve that information. So effectively, everything that we're doing in life is using the experience of the present to make a decision, but we base that decision on our patterning from the past. And as we all know, that patterning doesn't necessarily make sense all the time. It's not, it wasn't necessarily rational when it was laid down, let right. alone when it's recalled into the present moment yeah. and in essence what we're looking at when we're understanding everything that we do within unveil or coaching or like self-awareness or you know personal development the major goal is trying to make some of those subconscious practices and patterns conscious we're trying to bring them into the, the conscious awareness typically not so you can stop things happening Typically not so you like arrest it before it occurs, but so it can occur and you catch it before it truly is expressed. And things like meditation are, all, the whole goal of every meditative practice is to increase the gap between stimulus and re response or reaction, as you were saying. So yeah. stimulus reaction, if you put a pause in the middle, you can have stimulus break and then you can actually respond. And as a conscious person- With your conscious mind, yes, as opposed can, to- Yeah, and you can yeah. choose to respond from a place of, different patterning, or you can actually choose to respond according to your patterning. Yeah, you're actually giving yourself a choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when it comes to this idea of having it all together on the outside, mm -hmm. but actually inside you're really suffering and struggling somewhere, it's really common for one simple reason, and that's because in order to be accepted by the tribe, you have to sort of look like you've got it all together. Yeah. And if you don't, it, we think. And that's the thing. So it's like this whole received wisdom of having it all together equals success. Irrespective of what's going on underneath the surface, if you have it all together, if you look like you have it all together, you are quote unquote successful. Yeah. And then what I would challenge you if you think that that is the truth, I would ask you what your definition of success is. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of successful people that are very unfulfilled. So which is more important, to look good or to literally know and feel that grounded, solidness, true version of yourself? Mm -hmm. And you get to ask yourself that question. What's more important to you? And then when you have your answer, why? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because... We deal a lot with executives in Unveil, and particularly in our Unveil Premier packages. We deal a lot with people who are driven to be successful on the surface. Yep. And actually, I want to really call this out right now. All of those insecurities that you're hiding with your surface success are what are driving your surface success. Ooh. So realistically, quite a lot of the people that we look at in terms of super successful entrepreneurs, people who are changing the world, essentially, oh are super successful on the outside because their inner feelings of insecurity are driving their surface success. And it's funny because, you know, this, there, are, there are certain habits and behaviours and strategies that are accepted and certain ones that aren't. And so inner insecurities that drive people to alcohol or <laughs> drugs or to um, smoking or something like that. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Riley's punching off a whiskey is kind of coming out. <laughs> but, there, but there are certain insecurities, well, there are insecurities that drive people to certain behaviours that are numbing and all of that kind of stuff that we, we look at and know are coping strategies, drinking, drugs, all that kind of yeah. stuff. But then there are certain things that we validate over exercise, 
type A drive, workaholics, all of that kind of stuff, we validate those behaviours, not recognising that sometimes over-exercise, being a workaholic, yeah. is as much a numbing strategy as anything else. Yeah, so be careful how you define what is a good thing and what is a bad thing, right. because, you know, those good things can be bad. Well, it, it, it's all about motivation. Well, I say bad, not bad. I used the wrong word. Yeah. But like, um, maybe not the most beneficial for your life. Sure. sure. And as far as I'm concerned, back to that, the face on the outside and the face that you have on the inside. Yeah. To shorten that distance between those two, you don't need to be doing any of the behaviors that drive you away from the truth of what's inside. And that is the whole key. Yeah. Like if, if you wanted, when you were a kid, you wanted to be a painter and mom and dad may have said, nope, you're not gonna be a creative, you're gonna be a dentist. Mm -hmm. No offense to any dentists who are painters out there. Um, <coughs> to be accepted by parents, to stay in their good graces, yeah. you were like, okay, I'm gonna let the creative part go and I'll focus on you know, something that's considered by society. And obviously my parents who love me and accept me and, you know, I need to be loved and accepted by for right. survival right. at the end of the day. Um, you, you do what you have to do to survive. Right. And that's something that you established when you were younger. Is that necessarily the truth for you now? Right. Do and I think you, that's a yeah. really, really important thing to have brought up because everything that we're talking about in terms of, oh, it's really common for people to be running around like this is developed long before adult success is even part of what's um, the reality. Sorry, Riley's excited. There's another dog next to her, she can hear her. I got her, I wrangled her. And if we have any clunky edits in this, it's just because I've cut out some dog barking. <laughs> so it's all fine. So when it comes to the idea of this needing to have it all together and needing to present the surface face, Oftentimes that isn't the strategy we chose as a child to have it all together, but there no. was something about our innate something within us that wasn't quite met as a child, which means that we actually feel like we have to pretend. And that's the key here. It's not the, the choice of how you're pretending, it's that something happened somewhere in the past where pretense and falseness and a lack of authenticity and authentic expression became how you gained acceptance, how you gained love, how you gained feeling like you belonged. Right. And don't beat yourself up for that. You were young mm -hmm. and children are egocentric. Mm -hmm. It's just how they are. It has nothing to do with their selfish or anything. It's literally just the development of their brain mm -hmm. has not reached full maturity. Mm -hmm. So it's like, everything's my fault. Mm -hmm. uh, and oh. if I don't adjust mm -hmm. to my environment to make it better, mm -hmm. then oh. if it doesn't get better, it's my fault. Mm -hmm. And sometimes oh. we take that to mm -hmm. the nth degree mm -hmm. because we're taking care of everything. Oh. And it is, I mean, and when we say egocentric, just put a few like words around that because ego can get like people get really sensitive about it. Um, what we mean is like the whole world revolves around a child. It's just you can look at a child and know that's true. Um, and there is the the essence that if your if your whole world revolves around you, you have to take responsibility for everything, the good and the bad. Yeah. It's actually it's interesting because that is often a coping strategy that people use, taking responsibility for everything. Mm -hmm. It's one of those little quirky things that people do. And it's like, if it's all my fault, good and bad, it's in my control. And that whole kind of it's my fault, it's my fault <laughs> can come from that sense of if I just take it all on, I can ensure that it's in my control. And that's a power game, it's a power move, because again, when we're talking about having it together on the outside and falling apart on the inside, why do you want to have it all together? Because you want to feel powerful. Yeah, you want because to... power equals fill in the blank. Right, everything, success, you know, safety, 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 everything comes back to safety. And yes, it's acceptance of the tribe, but it's also like, let's look at the converse of that. Why is it unsafe to fall apart? Why does it feel so unsafe to not have it all together? Mm. You know what? Pause for just a second. Mm. Listener. 
why does it feel unsafe for you to fall apart? Mm. Really think about that. Get honest with yourself. Mm. And whatever reasons are coming forward are okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Those things are okay. Mm. They don't, may not feel very good, mm. but it's okay to have those feelings. Mm. So why are some reasons? So yeah. the thing about falling apart, if we lay some context into it, the concept of falling apart is likely con to contain a lot of emotional content because the reason we hold it yeah. together is because we're hiding pain. So when I say falling apart on the inside, what I really mean is experiencing inner pain, yeah. experiencing emotional turmoil, experiencing emotions, full stop. And so what people are really saying when they're walking around going, I can't fall apart, it's very much, I don't trust myself around the emotions that will come up if I crack and let go and let what's on the surface down to see what's underneath. Yeah. Because what's underneath is pain. Yeah, and if I do let go, I don't know how far it's going to go, what's going to happen, mm -hmm. am I going to downward spiral? Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that I avoided for a long time is avoiding any situation that would make me extremely uncomfortable or, mm -hmm. or think really dark, mean things about myself mm -hmm. because I knew that if I let that even become a thought in my mind that I would spiral out. Mm -hmm. And it would, it would just get darker and darker. And then it was like, you know, anger and all this stuff. And the anger would come because I know that I'm better than this. Why am I? Uh, rah, 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 rah. Uh, that unresolved love that we talked about, you know, in our other podcast. Yeah, yeah. In our other podcast. And, and so I avoided it at all costs. And it's really interesting that you say that because as the witness to your process, and I think I shared a bit about this in the anger podcast, but um, which was, I think episode five guys just head back. Um, the, there is a, a real evolution that I've witnessed you could walk through with your anger. And the, the last thing to shift was your avoidance of it. Like you really still didn't want to fully go there. You mm -hmm. kind of got the cognition around, oh, I can know what it's coming and I know what it's here for and I know what it's trying to tell me. And I know, but getting into going into that anger has been a very latter stage thing because it's very much... Yeah. You didn't know anything else other than it would cause a spiral. It would create a, a downward trend that you absolutely didn't feel that you could cope with. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because my belief, and it's borne out by countless hours of taking clients through this and my own stuff, is that emotions fully expressed self-regulate. The thing that prevents the emotions from self-regulating is our constriction around them as they're coming up. That is 100% true. Everybody out there, no matter what you think, that's the truth. Mm. It's like the more you try to repress, the louder those things become. And the more uncontrollable and the more unstoppable. Yeah. And the key here is let's look back at childhood. There is undoubtedly a period of time in your childhood where you expressed an emotion. Probably all kinds of inappropriately because you're a kid and you don't know how to do it. But somehow, somewhere, that wasn't met and received and honoured and loved. And so the first memory of your biggest emotional expression, whether it was excitement or terror or you know joy yeah, or pain, yeah. whatever, and a parent goes, oh, just be quiet for a minute, I'm focusing here. Or, oh, don't do that in the kitchen because you'll knock over the pans. Or, oh, you can't do that when grandma's here because she's you know sensitive to noise. Any of that, all is entrainment that keep a lid on emotionality. And so as an adult, we learn that emotionality, not only does it need to be repressed, but we witness ourselves around it. We witness our, you know, oh, we feel it, we catch it, we repress it, and then it gets inside us to build and it feels pretty toxic. Mm -hmm. And none of this is true emotion. All of this is repressing emotion. Even if you're yelling at someone or screaming at someone, if you're in any way judging your emotionality, which we all do, you are not fully expressing that emotion. So it becomes super common that we don't trust ourselves around our own emotions. We don't trust emotions in and of themselves mm -hmm. because we feel that they're super loud and toxic and damaging. But that's not the true truth of emotions. And think about it, an emotion purely felt, genuinely felt, passes in seconds. Literally seconds, just as long as you feel it. So allow, mm -hmm. allow 
your emotions. They are okay. And I know <laughs> there's going to be people out there going, well, not when so-and-so's around and not when this is around. Mm -hmm. Or oh, you don't know my emotional. Yeah, it's like, okay, yes, and... Have you ever really been with your own emotional body? Truly. And just sat with your own emotions and not sought to change it, not sought to shift it, not had self-reflected consciousness, awareness, thoughts of this is bad, this means X about me, this means Y about me, this, this is something that I shouldn't be doing. And anyone who is feeling that this is fucking stupid come up, it's probably something. Right. And anyone who's thinking, oh, I don't really have emotions. I can't really access my emotions. Yeah. Well, you're a human being. And I do want to acknowledge and honor that there are different emotional landscapes that people experience. Yes. And still, you don't get through this life without feeling. Can't. You're a human being. And biologically, all of those hormones and neurotransmitters that you have are designed to stimulate emotion so that you move from a situation. Fear is an emotion. So you, you get frightened, it's a biological impulse to make you leave the situation. And so when we're talking about all of this fear and safety and do you have it all together on the outside but are falling apart on the inside, the biggest thing that's driving this is fear. The fear is what's maintaining the mask on the outside because you can't let anyone see. The fear is what's preventing you looking from the inside because you don't trust yourself with emotions. So where you're actually stuck is limbo. Yeah. You're not being true on the surface and you don't look inside. So what is the truth? Of what is actually happening we have these stories about oh i can't you know tap into my emotion or emotion cannot be released or i cannot say this or do that um because there will be consequences mm -hmm. and you think that because uh when you were young there were consequences and now that you're an adult you still have that same uh, narrative that is playing out in every aspect of your life you just don't know it mm -hmm. because it's all in your subconscious yes. there's no way you can cognitively realize that that is what's happening until now mm -hmm. because you know the information you're able to step back and really look before this moment you may not have known that mm -hmm. and now that you do you have an opportunity to step into some freedom mm -hmm. for yourself. The invitation is right there. Mm -hmm. Taking it might be absolutely terrifying. Mm -hmm. And that's what's great about having a coach is like you get to open your invitation, terrified as hell, but you have somebody that is super solid mm -hmm. right there with you the whole way. You don't have to walk through the scary maze by yourself, you get to, ugh, you get, you're still gonna be scared, but you're gonna be with this one person mm -hmm. who nothing that jumps out at them mm -hmm. is frightened of. Mm -hmm. That's another reason why I love coaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting because there is an element of this where the intention of calling this podcast what we did is because we know there will be, there will be people who listen to it who are like, yeah, that's me. But the, the nature of our conversation, I know there will be many people who came into this thinking, oh, that's not me. And yet are suddenly going, hang on a second, is that me? Is that something that I do to? Am I hiding my own kind of inner world mm -hmm. from myself? Mm -hmm. And Great. That's good. <laughs> that's a good thing to happen. That's great that that happens. Yeah, because there is an, a necessity within this. And this is why I love working with successful executives, especially men, because the, their drive and impulse to have it all together is really biologically driven. It's the man needs to provide, the man needs to be successful, the man needs to have the strength and the pillars and the, the safety and the security. And so men who get to this point where I'm nurturing them towards, it's okay to feel, and it's okay not just to feel, but to express how you're feeling and be honest about it, mm -hmm. because there are no consequences. And that's that's the key. The first thing to do with this is get really honest. But that's not honest with your work staff. It's not honest on Instagram. It's not honest, you know, to yeah. your yeah. wife. Uh -huh. It's honest with yourself. Yeah. It's the first point, and sometimes it's the last point, yourself and your coach sometimes, but this isn't 
this isn't an outside game. You're making it an outside game by thinking you need to have a mask and a face on the Yeah, because you get outside. validated for that outside game. You get validated by society, your bank account, like everything. You get validated by all these outside things. And honestly, guys, at the end of the day, you need those things in your life just to move through life because right. that's the way life functions. It but it's it's probably the least valuable thing that you can do. Well, and there's that essence of the biggest sentence I get from my executives, my high achievers, my high performers when I'm like walking them into this dark dungeon of depth of internal world mm. is, but what happens if I lose my edge? And it's like, that's a legitimate fear because yes, it is. all that you know yeah. about your edge is that it's driving off your insecurities. But I have never once seen someone discover and become intimately aware of their insecurities and heal those and be any less effective on the surface. You want to talk about 10 times more effective. And sometimes the edge changes. Sometimes what you thought was your edge was like actually just you faking it. And But what you develop by having a cohesive line between your inner world and your outer world, which isn't founded on pain and fear and running away, is power. Yeah, completely empowering yourself. It's one of the things that I've found. Mm. It's like mm. I was putting on a certain type of face that everything was okay and that I had it all together but in certain situations I, that would kind of crumble I'm like what is that all about well and I, I, I think that the thing that I'm in my personal evolution discovering about myself is how cleanly and clearly I see things and I remember the conversation where we had where we, that we had where I said do you mind if I share a reflection with you and you let me and it's like I could see the face and the truth and somehow having that around that energy of support to just love, irrespective of whether you're showing me a face or a truth or anything, mm. allows you to go through your own journey of discovering what was underneath. Yeah, and then in that discovery, complete and utter freedom. How many people out there, if you are successful, if you are successful, I probably said that wrong, but mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, you're, you're, you're happy with the way things look on the outside, wouldn't it be amazing to have both the outside and the inside at the same time? Mm -hmm. Because it is possible. Well, and that's often the place where I get my executives too. It's like, I don't ever convince them that they're not going to lose their edge, but I do get to the point where I'm like, wouldn't it be worth sacrificing a little bit of your edge to feel okay and be able to sleep at night? And like, they always much, say yes. Yeah, like, <laughs> like how much more would that be worth? Absolutely. And it's like, what are you going to do with the money? Leave it to your kids? Okay, great. What about leaving your kids with the memory of a parent who was there and present and not repressed? I mean, that's an infinitely better legacy than yeah. millions and squillions in the bank. Of course. You know, and then you have people that's like, you know, what's worth more? Looking good? Your pride? Your facade? The way people look at you? And then at the end of the day, on your deathbed, you're looking at yourself and being like, oh. Well, and that's the thing. It's like, so you, what? Yeah. Don't and, do that. <laughs> well, and so you've got all of this external adoration, whether you're an Instagram influencer or a you know, businessman who's super respected. It's like, well, who are they respecting if they're respecting the mask that you wear? Because they sure as hell aren't they respecting you. Not the real you. Exactly. And, so, and maybe that's why you put on that facade. Because if they saw the real you, would they respect you at all? Ooh, bum, bum, bum. Right, and it's like, and that's the thing. So when you start to be honest, and you start to see, and you start to accept that there's stuff in there, you get to explore the motivation behind that stuff's existence, and that's the true work. And sometimes you can do it yourself, and oftentimes you actually need somebody else to observe you in your natural habitat, playing out your patterns, and go, can you see that this is where this comes from? That this is why this crops up. And it isn't necessarily just external stuff. Like we're not trying to always protect ourselves from what we see as threats on the outside, not being loved, not being appreciated, not being all that. A lot of the time, this protection is from us. We fear ourselves way more than we fear the outside sometimes. Mm -hmm. And again, it comes from that, comes back to that, you know, anything un unexplored could be anything. And therefore we make it up to be so massive in our brain. It's like, we're in a darkened room 
and we sense that there's a presence behind us. And in our imagination, it's biologically imperative that we imagine it to be this massive, dangerous demon thing. But if we just turn around and shine a flashlight on it, it's probably just a little tiny spider in the corner. And it's like all of the unknown becomes huge in our brain because it's biologically advantageous to think it's scary and frightening. Turn around and shine a light on it and suddenly you're like, oh, knowing the actual shape of the thing that I've been hiding is infinitely safer than thinking I couldn't look at it because it could have been anything. Yeah, and it is so much more exaggerated in your mind's eye mm. because that type of thought process keeps you safe. It It's like, oh, if we find out that it's small, we can overcome it. Mm -hmm. But it almost is to this thing's advantage to appear to us as this big, overpowering monster. Mm. Well, and also the shame thing comes in then. So if you turn around and find out that it's really tiny, oh, but your yeah. entire life's been yeah. in a complete lie, it's just like, mm, that really wasn't worth it. And that's why I love being a coach and having coaches around because they get to reframe that for you and actually help you see that everything that you've done up until this moment when you're listening to this podcast is exactly how it should have been. Whether you're running on fear, whether you're running away, whether you're emotionally repressed, mm. whether you're emotionally uh, just like whatever, all of it's perfect up until this point. But every time you listen to one of our Unveiled podcasts, we want you to be asking the question, do I love my life? Am I happy with exactly how it is? And if not, how can I reveal parts of myself to myself so I can start to make different choices? And that's the magic of getting to be us. <laughs> it's so, oh man. Guys, I'm gonna talk about freedom. Mm. You will move through the world completely different because nothing will have power over you. You're detached from the outcome of anything because that could mean something about you. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, at the end of the day, the only thing that means something about you is what you think and feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. So being able to like let that go and just move through the world and just whatever happens, happens and it's okay. And it's not necessarily bad or good because I don't necessarily know one way or the other, mm -hmm. if that is a good thing or a bad thing, other than the, <clears throat> the rules and the criteria that I've put on that situation or scenario that says to me it is good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> excuse me. One of my, uh, or one of our mentors mm -hmm. um, from our, our, our former program, you know, told a story, you know, about this gentleman who had a horse and it's like this beautiful horse and his neighbor's like, Oh, it's such a great horse. You must be so, you know, happy and you're so lucky. And he's like, well, you know, we'll see, you know? And then the horse runs away and the neighbor's like, Oh God, you lost your horse. And he's like, well, we'll see. And then the horse brings back all these other horse, like finds a bunch of wild horses. And then there, he has all these, new horses now and the neighbor's like oh man you're so lucky and he's like well we'll see but then something like what what is the i can't remember so there's something about his yeah son i mean you guys get returns yeah. and he's like you know, oh yeah yeah, yeah. and his horse. son returns and then but then his son falls off the horse and breaks his leg and he's right. like oh no he's never going to be able to work on the farm and then it's like you're so unlucky and, and he's like well we'll see and then they there is a war that breaks out and they're drafting and they come to get gather his son and the son's leg is broken and they're like okay well you're no good for us and then they leave him there and it's like was he lucky i don't know we'll see um and this i, I do this game a lot with my clients because given my history i have had to change the way i see everything in life tell me more so during my illness if i saw everything that was challenging as a challenge I would have succumbed very quickly to the mental weight of that. Right. So the key in that story is that nothing is good or bad, it just is, and it could be potentially anything. So having that we'll see attitude, for me, I didn't frame it like that because I didn't know that myth well, and that kind of narrative yeah. at the time, but it was very much like everything is an opportunity. So when things would go wrong, it's an opportunity. When things change, it's an opportunity. When things hurt, it's an opportunity. And I do that 
to this day in life. Like today, just being personal, I've had a little bit of a hiccup in my plans with the whole kind of where I was going to leave my stuff when I'm heading back to the UK. And it's just all kind of gone, oh, road bump. And it is a little bit disconcerting. And when you came today, I was a little bit like, oh, I'm not quite sure where this is. But always underneath that, I'm like, it's happened for a reason. There's some reason that this has happened. And it can be anything. And I do, I run this with my clients who have a lot of fear-based stuff where they're really conscientious, often from a place of love, of like, what happens if what I does hurt somebody? And it's like, or what happens if I miss that? And I, I work this a lot with my obsessive compulsive patients as well. It's like their obsessions are keeping them safe. And yes, we can work the obsessions and do kind of exposure therapy and all that kind of stuff. But the key of this is learn what happens if the thing that you're fearing the most actually happens. Is it as terrible as you think it is? So if you, I don't know what the, the let's just pick a phantom obsession. So if you, throw that thing away and you're always conscious about throwing things away because you don't want to throw away something that's personal that you might need and it's like okay so you throw that thing away and you actually threw away I don't know your driving license oh no you need to go to the post office to get another form to sorry it's a very English example but you need to go to the post office to get another form to like apply for a driving license mm. and whilst you're there you kind of a bit like annoyed and at the checkout counter and suddenly you turn around and there's this beautiful woman there like this man in my example this beautiful woman there and you're like oh my goodness and then she smiles and you strike up a conversation and two two years later you've got a wife just from the one thing that you think you did wrong that you thought was the worst thing in the world. And so it's all of this kind of, everything happens for a reason. It's all about how you see it and how it works for you. Mm -hmm. And everything is always working for you. Yeah. Which is why I come back to, if you are the person that we've described in the title of this podcast, where everything is all together on the outside, but you feel like it's falling apart on the inside, great. Great. It's exactly where you're supposed to be right now. But you get to choose. You get to say... I want a whole, a whole life of happiness. And I don't want to be pretending anymore. Because yeah. the energetic cost of pretending is flipping enormous. Huge. And then make the choice. Mm. Like, now you have the information in your conscious mind. Mm. So make the choice to do it for you. Not for anybody else. Not for your partner or your colleagues or your company or your friends. Make the choice for you and change your life. Mm. And I just want to be responsible and put in some healthy caveats here. Yeah. What we're talking about is looking into the darkness of your emotions and the depth of your soul. And some people have small T trauma stuff there and like easy stuff to move through. And other people are consciously or subconsciously or unconsciously creating walls and protections because what's actually hiding there is really big. Yeah. And life is hard. Yes, so if you suspect that this is you, but what's underneath is something that is really traumatic and is going to bring up a lot for you, do it with someone. Yeah, seek get guidance. Help. Get, get, get guidance, yes. Professional because guidance. emotions are totally safe, and I'm not going to retract that statement, but the pain that you've been through might feel deeply unsafe. And there is a need to do that in a safe environment where you feel like you can re-regulate your nervous system at the end of it with the support of somebody expert in that. Yeah. Not that you go into the darkness and you get stuck there. Like I used to do. Yeah. Because that's what I would do. Yeah. I remember one of our first conversations and you were, you were about to get mad and you were like, no, I don't want to go there, Victoria. And I just said, I can hold it. Just go there. That was a very scary moment mm -hmm. for me. Because mm -hmm. I spent all my energy avoiding that. It was only when I went into it in the presence of a pro that I was able to move into it and through it and come out on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the, the key ingredient there is love. So you can marshal yourself through this journey providing the way you see yourself is entirely from a place of love. Mm. So when those emotions come up and it feels dark and hurtful, what you're actually doing is repatterning your own nervous system. You're reparenting yourself. You're re-loving yourself into life. And sometimes you can do that on your own. And all I do in my coaching sessions, irrespective of whether it's you who I love dearly or whether it's a client, all of my clients I love dearly, actually. Mm. But what I'm bringing to that space is the love that they really need to know that everything even all of the darkness, no matter how dark, is something that we can hold. 
All you gotta do is take it. <laughs> All you gotta do is take it. I don't know. If that's not a real song. I just kind of made it up. But yeah, and, and and not to get you know too deep and you know oh, about it because there's a lot of wonderful things about making those changes in your life. Like yes. wonderful things. Mm. Uh, it's not all just scary and, oh God, I got to trudge through all the, the chaos of my life, which you do, but... Well, but the goodness is on the other side of the goo. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like our phrase of the week. <laughs> yeah. It's like you get to you get to have a new life and it was your choice to do that. You did that for yourself. You empowered yourself. You are way more powerful than you know that you are. Mm. And we're just one of the avenues that can help you achieve that state mm. in life, mm. in your life. The way you see yourself, the way you experience life will shift and change forever. Do you want to continue? Oh, well, here's a question that you can reflect on. Do you want to continue experiencing life the same way that you're experiencing life right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if your answer is no, I invite you to look at what is available to you. Mm -hmm. What is available to you? It is literally everything is available to you. Mm -hmm. Everything. We probably haven't like, said it on this podcast, yeah. but the tagline of Unveil is discover your life's possibilities. That's right. Because they're infinite. And all mm. it takes is the courage to take the first step. Mm -hmm. And the key ingredient in the courage to take the first step is believing you deserve it. Because you do. I was going to say, spoiler alert, you, you all do. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. That is a universal truth. And there is nobody out there that convinced me otherwise. <laughs> mm. It's there, guys. Mm. You know what? I'm feeling good. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Good. I feel like we've really explored the avenues around this. Yes. And this is kind of the style I think we're going to start moving toward as far as our podcast goes. You know, the first several episodes, you know, we were, you know, discussing coaching techniques and introducing you to us and how we work and our philosophies about coaching in our lives and all this stuff. And now we just want to start bringing super relatable content to the masses. Mm. It's like everybody, no matter how different we think we are, everybody experiences the same things mm -hmm. in our own unique way. Mm. And so, we're gonna we're gonna move into those. Yeah, and if you, I mean, we've said obviously we'd love your feedback, we'd love your topic suggestions, we'd love you to let us know what you want us to cover. Mm -hmm. um, so all of that. We've also offered the potential of live coaching on the Unveil podcast, which will be coming soon, um, and we will be getting interview guests on. Probably not in the first six months of our podcast, but mm -hmm. down the line we will. And um, but if you just have a suggestion or a, a problem that you're noodling through and you don't want to come on the podcast but you want us to noodle through it, for yeah, you, let's, we'll, we'll noodle, noodle away. away. Yeah. So just email us podcast at unveilenterprises.com. We are more than happy to take suggestions or send us a DM on Instagram. We are both available under our private accounts and in every set of show notes we tag us both and our unveil account. So just find us, reach out to us. We'd love to be of support in the best way we can to everyone because life is hard. The world is crazy, but everyone is universally allowed to feel good within themselves. And I'm feeling good. Gosh, boom, 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 boom. Oh, boom, now you've boom, broken boom, my up. Uh, no, boom, stop. Boom, boom, stop. Boom, boom, da, da, da. Right, with that, guys, I'm going to cut Brace off. Yes. So for now, my name is Brace Harris. <laughs> and I'm Victoria Fenton. And we are. Unveil. Unveil.